suspensions and raise the money. Okay, now, each one of these major political parties at the national level, level are led by chair people, okay? I have their names on the board right now. Now, Michael Watley, who's from North Carolina, and his co-chair, Laura Trump, which be, would be Donald Trump's daughter-in-law. This just happened two weeks ago on the 11th. Ronna Romney McDaniel was the previous RNC chair. She was fired as soon as Trump received enough delegates to win the Republican nomination. And they have cleaned house and fired 60 staffers from the RNC. The RNC is now in firm control of the MAGA wing of the Republican Party, or the more conservative wing of the Republican Party. Follow me. Now, the video you guys finished watching yesterday, did that go okay? You got to see a conservative elected president. And who was that? Ronald Reagan. Now remember this tug of war inside the Republican Party between the establishment Republicans and the conservative Republicans is still going on as we speak. The House majority that the Republicans enjoy, they have a majority of the seats in the House of Representatives, is continually shrinking and may be gone by the time November rolls around. Kevin McCarthy, who was the speaker, got ousted as speaker, and then he said, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. And he quit, leaving a vacancy in his seat that needs to be filled by a special election. Other Republicans have done the same thing. They're leaving. And these are generally your more establishment Republicans that are leaving. So the House majority is down to a three-seat majority right now for the Republicans in the House. As this tug of war between the conservatives and the establishment Republicans continues. Now, Trump is running as a conservative. So Michael Watley and now the co-chair, Laura Trump, and the Democratic chairperson, they have two major jobs. How many? Two jobs. So the, the committees have two jobs, and then the chairs have two jobs. Ready? Number one. Is to win. Win control of Congress. And the White House. Those are their major, that's one major role, is to win. Now, if you don't win, like Romna Romney, Rana Romney McDaniel, who was the chair up until March 11th, she did not have a good record of winning. In 2020, the Republicans lost the presidential election. And in 2018, Republicans didn't do very well in congressional races. In 2022, in the midterm elections, the Republicans were supposed to have a big day. A red wave. It became a red whip, uh, ripple, just like a little ripple instead of a wave. Listen, 2022, we had record 40-year inflation to pull out of Af 
Afghanistan was botched by President Biden. It was very unpopular. And so you expect the Republicans to do well in a midterm. Historically, the party out of power always does, does good in that election. Republicans should have won a large majority of seats in both the Senate and the House. They didn't win the Senate, and they barely took control of the House. So Romna, Rana, Romney McDaniel, he got fired. Now, she got hired this week by NBC News. And the other people that work at NBC News are like, what? You hi- why are you hiring this woman to work at NBC News? The former chair of the Republican National Committee. She's a liar. She's an election denier. How can you put her on NBC News? You guys with me? Okay, so you guys have a good picture of what these national parties look like. Okay, they run the conventions. Oh, I got to give you a second thing here. Yeah. Yeah, what's the second thing? Don't lose. What percentage of Democrats want somebody else to be the nominee besides Joe Biden? A lot. What percentage of Republicans want somebody besides Donald Trump? Who may be convicted of a felony before he actually runs for president. This is hard. Now, in 2016, the RNC chair was a guy named Reince Priebus. And when Trump got the nomination, he had to try and get other Republicans to support him. And he did enough to win the election. He did his job, created party unity. Yes, sir. Okay, so I don't know if you guys. Do I have to be the news? Yes. For you guys? Yes. So the $354 million bond or $450 million bond that Trump was going to have to pay to appeal his decision, this was in the New York case where um, he overvalued the properties when he got loans from banks, that he paid back all the money to the banks. Okay. An appeals judge lowered that to $175 million yesterday. So Trump has that. Coming up with $450 million is going to be a challenge for Trump. And they were going to start seizing his properties in New York. Okay. Which is not a good look for New York. But anyhow. So that happened. And then yesterday they set a trial date. Does anybody know who Stormy Daniels is? Okay. She is a former, I don't know, maybe she still is, an adult actress. An adult film star, Stormy Daniels, who President Trump had an affair with. These facts are not disputed. Okay? Now, does President Trump want the world to know that he had an affair with an adult actress? No. So he paid her money to keep her mouth shut. Is that illegal? No. But where you get that money could be illegal. Okay. Now, there's been many opportunities for the SEC, the Federal Elections Commission as well, to pursue charges on Trump on this issue, like using campaign money 
as hush money. Neither the SEC or the Federal Elections Commission saw enough evidence to bring a case. However, the district attorney in New York that hates Trump, that is bringing a case, and a trial has been set for this. Now, I think the trial is set for May. This may be the only trial that takes place. There's three other trials. Those are likely to be pushed back after the election, including the January 6th, the classified documents one that was in uh, Florida, Mar a Lago. Okay. So, what was the question? That's a hush money case. Now, the key witness for the government in New York against Trump is his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who's a convicted felon that just did prison time for lying, perjury. So he's their key witness. Now, when your key witness is a convicted felon that just did t- jail time for perjury, not a very strong case when this is your key witness, okay? So, but nonetheless, they're bringing the case to trial, yes. Yeah, there's, what about that? Yeah, Nathan, I don't know, you gotta dig, you gotta dig into it. Sorry, guys, uh, they canceled baseball and softball games today and just threw me a curveball. And I'm trying to hit it, but right now I'm swinging and missing. Okay. Curveball's okay. Now, I'm actually a pretty good curveball hitter. I was in my college days. I mean, I like hitting breaking balls, but I wasn't a fastball hitter. That was my problem. Yes, because as my college coach told me, I have a slider speed back. So I have trouble keeping getting catching up to a 90 mile an hour back. Okay. All right. Hey, 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 focus, focus. I'm recording here. Okay. So, um, how did we get on this? Trump, what are, no, we're yeah. talking about how to, like, creating party unity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This was what I was going to look up real quick. Yeah. John F. Kennedy Jr., right? Somebody, you, you got your phone. Uh, VP pick. He was supposed to announce his VP pick. Yes, I did see that. Did it come across? I don't. I, I didn't see what it was. Okay. That was Robert. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, yeah. What did I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Yeah. 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 All, all I see is Nicole Shanahan. Okay, Nicole what? Nicole Shanahan. Shanahan? 31 minutes ago. Okay. She is a former exec. At Twitter, before Elon bought it, okay, she's a Silicon Valley. I think she might be Indian. You got an image of Nicole she, Shanahan? She, Elizabeth she looks pretty Indian. white. She, oh, she's white. She looks okay. pretty white. Okay. Nicole Shanahan. American entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Political donor based in San Francisco Bay. In other words, he's got fat stacks of cash. And what does RFK Jr. need? Fat stacks of cash. Now, remember when we talked about third party, minor party, the role of splinter party. RFK, the Kennedys are a legacy in the Democratic Party. 
Yes? Yes. He splits, runs as an independent, and plays spoiler in the 2024 election. So Jamie Harrison, Michael Watley, and co-chair Laura Trump are trying to create party unity to get Republicans and Democrats to vote for the prospective parties, to unify the party. While this guy comes in with his VP running mate, likely, the fat stacks of cash. He now he announced that he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to announce today. Announce on TikTok. Who the VP candidate? He'll call me post on. Good. Got to announce by a certain time. No. Now they used to wait till the convention. Like you guys got to see the conventions in these videos. Al Gore screwed that up. So up until the year 2000, they would announce at the convention. That's why people watched, because they wanted to find out who the VP candidate was going to be at the convention. And then they, Al Gore announced it before the convention, uh, a guy named Joe Lieberman, uh, who I actually, I really like Joe Lieberman. Uh, he would have been the first Jew. He was the first Jew on a ticket, and he would have been the first Jewish vice president okay, if Joe Lieberman had been elected with Al Gore. Okay. Now, Joe Lieberman would be a guy that I consider voted for. Al Gore, not so much. But anyhow, so we good here. We got we understand these political parties and the structure of these parties. Now, what I want to talk about next is the state political parties in the national, uh, the local political parties. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about next. There is all kinds of news going on, though, yes. Now, guys, some polls are showing RFK Jr. pulling 15% of the popular vote. Now, is he going to pull more from Democrats? He's going to pull from both sides. He's going to get some Republicans. He's going to get some Democrats. Which is he going to pull more from? Probably Democrats, okay, which is that spoiler thing. So this reminds me a lot of 1992, guys. Ross Perot, okay, with a fairly strong third-party candidate that doesn't have enough support to win any electoral votes, but does have enough support to spoil an election for somebody. Okay, so let's keep an eye on that. Now, at the state level, We're not really going to talk much about it, guys, because it really mirrors the national party. Okay, so they have a state chairman, chairperson of, at, of each party in the states, okay, and they have smaller committees, just basically mirroring the national. So I'm not going to really spend any time on it. But I am going to spend some time on the local part. You guys ever heard this term grassroots? Okay. It's, political scientists use this term like all politics is local. Okay. And so when you break down local party politics, you generally do this by county. Okay, so you have the Sedgwick County Democratic Party and the Sedgwick County Republican Party. Okay, the Republicans go by the, the name the Pachydermy Club. Nathan, do you know what a Pachyderm is? You know what a pachyderm is. You know what a pachyderm is? What's a pachyderm? It's an elephant. So the pachydermy club, you get it? Yeah. You guys did the history of political parties? Of course. Assignment, some of you, not very many. Okay. Listen. You like politics? Now, 
I think everybody in here said they're going to college. Is that right? Yeah. Everybody in here going to college? On almost every college campus, they have the college Republicans and they have the college Democrats. Okay? How many of you guys have ever heard of Turning Point USA? Guys like Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens. Okay? This is TPUSA is a national organization that tries to get college kids involved in the conservative movement. Not Republican movement, the conservative movement. Turning Point USA. And they're on a ton of college campuses as well. Fact, where was it? Memphis University last week. Did anybody see what happened there? Turning Point USA student body at Memphis University invited a speaker. This is what they do. They invite speakers to college campuses, and it really agitates the people on the left that care so much about free speech. Anybody know who Kyle Rittenhouse was? Is Well, he was invited to speak at Memphis University by Turning Point USA student body at Memphis. <laughs> Well, there's an invest investigation still going on, but TPUSA, no, to this is what happened at Memphis. They have ticket sales on their website. Well, the day before the event, the school told TPUSA that the people had to buy tickets through the school. And so somehow, the list of attendees' names got leaked out to the protesters. And so a bunch of protesters showed up. See, what they like to do is buy tickets to the event, protesters. And then when the events start, they have a protest, and then they all walk out. But they take up all the seats, so other people can't buy the tickets. People that want to see the speaker. It's a common... So they were able to do some of that. And then when the people came out, there was a mob of people yelling and screaming at the people that watched the Rittenhouse speech. Okay. So, yeah, that happened last week. Anyhow, sounds like something you guys want to get involved in, right? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to, like, encourage people to get involved in politics. And then I tell you this, these horror stories. So, anyhow. Um. Guys, all you have to do is call. Say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I would like to get involved. They love young people getting involved. What are you going to do? Go down there, and you can address the mailers to be sent out to, to people. You can make phone calls. You can put up signs in people's yards. Do other events. Okay? Get involved. And you know what? When you get involved, you start meeting other people that are involved. All right? Now, we have local positions like the county commission, the city council, the school boards. Where are you going to find people to run for these offices? From the local parties. Yo, over here. In the state legislature. In Topeka. You're going to find people from the local parties. So listen, let's say you're 18 years old. You go volunteer for the, for the uh, Republican or Democratic um, party in Sedgwick County, you get to meet some people, and one of these people is going to run for office. And they get elected, and they need somebody to work on their staff. They say, hey, you want a job? Come work for me in, in Topeka at the state legislature. And then this person decides to run for Congress. 
for the U.S. Congress. Next thing you know, you're working in the U.S. Capitol as a staffer for this member of Congress. And then he runs for the Senate. When's the Senate seat? Now you're working on the other side of building in the Capitol. And now by then you're a senior staffer. And then the senator decides to run for president. Next thing you know, you're working in the freaking White House. And it all started in Sedgwick County. That's how it worked. We had a student graduate a couple of years ago, her name Ava Dugan. Any of you guys know Ava? You know what her dad does? He's in politics. When did he get involved? In college. And he ended up working for a Congressman Todd Teamhart that represented the 4th District of Kansas, like Ron Estes does now. Okay. Then he worked for Governor Brown back as a staffer. Okay. Worked in Washington, worked in Topeka. Now he's a lobbyist. Makes a living in politics. There's lots of jobs in politics. Now, it helps if people you work for win. Now, what about you? Why don't you run for this city council spot? So they like you. You know, you're you're a smart person. You're like, hey, we need somebody to run for this seat. How about you? Okay, these are your neighbors, guys. These are your neighbors. They're businessmen and women. They're doctors. They're lawyers. Their school board members, their parents, these are your neighbors that fill these spots. Now, one of my assistant coaches, he's a JV coach named Ray Beatty. His son, Ryan, the elder of his two sons, played baseball, went to Northwest High School. And he went to KU, played baseball at KU, got a business degree, started his own Mattress company called the Mattress Hub with the sheep. You guys seen the commercials with the sheep? That's owned by Ryan Bain. Ryan Bain he decided to get involved in politics, so he ran for the county commission. He was elected and is now the county commissioner. Some in the Republican Party are talking to him about possibly running for governor. He's sharp, he's young, he's smart, successful. That's how it starts, guys. Okay? If you're interested in politics, all you got to do is pick up the phone or just go down to their offices and say, hey, I'd like to volunteer. And they're like, really? That'd be wonderful. Come on in. No experience required. Okay? Now, when we talk about the city council, we break the city of Wichita up into what are called wards. Okay. Ward, a ward is a geographic area that, so when you guys vote for city council, I'll be voting for somebody else because how many of you guys live in the city limits of Wichita? Okay. I live in a different part of town than you guys. I live out east. But we'd be voting in two different wards. We'll have different candidates that we're voting for, depending on where you live. So they divide a city up into what are called wards. Okay. And these are for city council elections. The smallest unit in politics is a precinct. This is where you vote. Yeah, did I misspell that? Yeah, I need an E in there. But I got the rest right. Precinct. You want to change the country. You want to change the trage trajectory, trajectory of the country. 
You don't do it from the top down. You do it from the grassroots level up. This has happened twice in modern politics. In the early 1990s, if you were paying attention to the video yesterday, there was a guy that it was a Republican that was talking. And he said something to the effect of, I don't want the Republican Party to just be the party of religious people. Anybody remember that quote? Something like that. In the 90s, guys, the Republican Party with something called the Christian Coalition started at the grassroots level trying to get Christians to run for these offices. Starting there. And then you build experienced candidates that can run for the state legislature and then the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. And that's how you transform the country. And guys, it worked. In 1994, what became known as the Republican Revolution, Newt Gingrich and the Republicans, Newt Gingrich became the Speaker of the House, won both houses of Congress for the first time in 40 years. And it started at the grassroots level. Okay, pushing this message of social conservatism, pro-life, against things like gay marriage. This drove people to the polls. Okay? Now, it's dangerous to do that for the Republican Party because you're kind of hamstringing yourself. You're just like Christians. And guys, there's not enough practicing Christians to win majorities. You've got to have a bigger tent than that. So it's dangerous for Republicans to hamstring themselves in that situation. In the 2000s, the Democrats learned from the Republicans. And they got good at this. Does anybody know what, before Barack Obama ran for office, so he first served in the Chicago, excuse me, the Illinois State Legislature, Springfield. And then he served, then he ran for the United States Senate. He jumped the House. He just went from the State Legislature to the U.S. Senate. Okay. Does anybody know what he was doing in the years before he ran for the state legislature in Illinois. He was a community organizer. And what do community organizers do? Is they get people to register to vote. They talk to them about important issues to the community. And then on election day, you get them out to vote. And the Democrats started several organizations like ACORN, which was a kind of an inner city organization that registered people to vote, spoke to them about important issues to their communities, and then turned them out to vote on election day. And this propelled Barack Obama to the presidency in 2008, laying the groundwork at the grassroots level. You guys, that takes a lot of work, and it's not glamorous. Okay. Now, the Republican Party, the RNC, by getting rid of Ronna McDaniel, the RNC is now in control, is now under the control of the conservative wing of the Republican Party, or the MAGA wing of the party, if you will. You guys with me on that? That's going to provide more energy to Republicans. Can they unify the party? I don't know. But energy is important. So, this gives you a good look at the political parties. Now, we started, when we started talking about these parties, we talked about five functions of the political party, yes? Now, the fact is that these political parties are no longer 
what they used to be. So we're going to look at four reasons why. How many? Four reasons why these parties have diminished influence. Or which time we got? <laughs> okay. Four reasons. Number one, and you know who you are. Guys, close to 35% of Americans refuse to identify with one of the two major parties. That's a significant number. Okay? Now, when you go vote, There could be a lot of different people on the ballot. Okay? Now, what's a party line vote look like? I go in and I check Democrat for every single one. It's a party line vote. I'm a hardcore Democrat or I'm a hardcore Republican. When you have 35% of people that don't identify with one of these two parties, you're going to get what's called split ticket voting. So, throw a president in here, right? Vote for Democrat for president, city council Republican, mayor Republican, county commission, Senate and House Democrat, mayor Republican, judges Republican, the DA Republican. That's a split ticket ballot, split ticket voting. You got more of that than you've ever had before. Rise of modern, right? Okay? Now, do you imagine that Mr. Ebright's ever voted for a Democrat? Of course I have. Okay. I didn't vote for Jimmy Carter. Couldn't vote that. I was too young. I didn't vote for Hillary. I didn't vote for Obama. But there was a race here in Wichita for the district attorney. This is back in the 2000s, and the district attorney that was running for re-election was a Democrat named Nola Folston. And Nola Folston had successfully prosecuted both BTK, which was a national case, you know, I mean, got national coverage, and the Carr brothers, securing the death penalty against the Carr brothers. The guy she was running against, the Republican, I don't want to say his name on, on recording, but I knew somebody, one of my friends' wife knew this guy. He said he was a jerk. He was mean to his wife. He's a jerk. She knew his wife. I'm like, okay. Well, then I'll vote for Nola Folsom. She's done a good job. I just know the last name. Start with an S. All right, so rise of moderates. You got it? 
Okay, here's another reason. We just had the primary here in Wichita, yes, last week. Trump won Kansas for the Republican primary. Biden won Kansas for the Democratic primary. Who gets to choose the candidates? The voters. Not the parties. The parties used to choose the candidates. So you would have your party elites, your delegates that were chosen in each state, and they would go to the convention and choose the candidates at the convention in August. Now we have these more than year long primary process, almost a year long, starting in January with New Hampshire and Iowa going through the summer. Where the voters decide. Parties don't get to pick the last time. One of the two parties chose a candidate it was 1976, Kansas City Republican National Convention, 76. Gerald Ford had replaced Nixon after he resigned. You had this guy named Ronnie Reagan, California. You guys remember Mr. Barber? He was there at the convention in Kansas City. Security. He was a security guard at the convention. Not that you need a lot of security at the Republican convention. Now, Democratic convention in Chicago, you might need some security. Am I right? Okay. Party chose Ford over Reagan. Okay. That was the last time. These primaries allow the voters to choose not the party, which decreases their power. Yes? Number three. One of the fun five functions of the party is the informative function. But today, guys, we have television and the internet. Yes, ma'am. Um, get with somebody. Have her take a picture, send it to you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'll deal with this in a second. Okay, real quick. We'll wrap this up. Listen, guys, okay, social media. You don't need these parties to inform you on, on the candidates, do you? No, you get you got all the access you need. You got TV, you got internet, and then four is what I'll dive into tomorrow. Okay. Does anybody know what a PAC is? Political Action Committee, which I will do a deep dive on tomorrow because they've really it's a game changer. Okay. So I'll spend time on number four, political action committees tomorrow. And now I'll try and deal with this curveball. What is the curveball? Well, they canceled my games, dude. 